Good morning, guys. Good morning. Well, listen, I wanted to tap on in and have a conversation and some open dialogue with y'all on this Freestyle Friday. I talk to women more so than men, and I just want to ask this question. What happens when we replace God with a man? Or better yet, what happens when we make a man our God? See, as little girls, the brainwashing starts. You know, we we turn on the cartoons or one of the most famous movies and you see this young girl, this young teenage girl or young woman growing up independent of her mom. It's always somebody d that died. Either the dad died or the mom died. And you have this young girl that's not getting nurtured and all the love that she needs and then she's hoping and wishing that one day this man, this prince will come in on this white horse and save the day and she'll live happily ever after. And if you really think about that now, as adult women, some of us have so many issues from our childhood. Maybe our father wasn't there or our mom wasn't there. We had some toxic relationships with adults that may have been responsible for us and they did the best that they could. And we find ourselves by ourselves and hoping and wishing and praying that one day the man of our dreams will come in our life and save the day. And so then it begins. Then it begins, the seed has been planted to fall on our knees for a man. Oh God, if you would just bless me with a husband so that I could have some help around the house. Oh God, if you could just bless me with a man so that I would have someone to be a partner. Oh God, if you could just bless me with a man so I could have some companionship. And the time that we spend and the energy that we waste, it goes <laughs> on a man. So then the man becomes the focus. The man becomes our center, center of attention. And somehow God just slips through the cracks. We began to beg and plead, oh God, where is my Boaz, right? Where is the man of my dreams, right? Everybody else has somebody and I have no one, right? All of this stuff, well, maybe if I had more money or maybe if I was thinner or maybe if I looked like the one that the last one who cheated on me with, if I looked like her, then maybe he would choose me. And then we began to compromise who we are as women. We began to let people through the gate that's not worthy to be in the gate. Then the next thing you know, we're tossing between the sheets. We're creating all kinds of soul ties and then we're broken and we're just hurting. So then we're back on our knees again, asking God, why is this happening and why is that happening? But instead of our relationship with God being the focus, our focus goes on the man. See, I want to let you know something that I was married over 20 years and here I am, you know, in my 40s and I'm single and I'm satisfied and the reason why I'm so complacent and so calm and so confident in who I am and what season I am in as a woman is because I have found rest in God. See, it's something magical that happens when you allow God to be your God and not a man to be your God. See, because when I can depend on God, I know that regardless of the situation, I'll never be abandoned or forsaken. You know, when I allow God to be in his proper place in my life, people that normally would get through the gate with me can't even make it to the entrance to even approach the gate. When God is the center and the focal point in my life, my mind is on things above. You know, you're able to really commune with him, allow him to come into your heart to do an open heart surgery, to open it up, to release the pain of all the things that caused you to make a man your God, 
to release the stories in your mind that tells you that you're not good enough, you're not pretty enough, everybody has this and you don't have that. You, you change because the Lord will come down inside of you and take up residence inside of you and begin to shine through you. So your focus becomes more so on God and what you can do for those around you, how you can add value to your situation, how you can find pur purpose and begin to walk in your purpose. And you really begin to clothe yourself with his grace and mercy. You begin to close yourself with his righteousness and with his splendor. You become something that he can boast about because you're able to get the man out of the position of God and get God back on the pedestal. So I just want to give you some things to look forward to if you do not put God in his proper place. When you make a man your God, it is guaranteed that that man will fail you. A man does not have the capacity, nor does he have the power to heal your wounds. We'll use a man as medicine or antidote or even a band-aid to cover the scars of pain. And that's not fair because he's not capable. That's a God thing. When you put a man in the place of God, the man would despise you spiritually though, because he knows that there's no competition. When you put the man in the place of God, you're setting yourself up to be used and abused and mistreated and ignored and stepped over. When you put a man in the place of God, you're looking to have no rest in your heart, in your soul, and in your mind. When you put a man in the place of God, you're constantly trying to chisel this man into the image of purified perfection when the only way you can get that perfection is through a relationship with God. When you put a man in the place of God, you lose your peace, you lose your virtue, and some of you lose your soul. When you put a man in the place of God, you're at the mercy of someone else being able to fill up your love tank. Like if I hear that like one more time, oh, you know, my love tank is empty. I just need somebody to fill up my love tank. You know, I just want somebody that I could just show up, spend some time with. What's wrong with that? If you cannot sit alone in your own space and be okay, there's a bigger problem. It's a bigger problem. If you cannot allow God to come into your heart to fill your love tank until it overflows, there's a bigger problem. Some of you are in relationships today where your nails are clawed into this dude and he is trying to run away from you because you're too needy. When you put a man in the place of God, you miss all of the potential all of the anointing, all of the covering, all of the supernatural power working in your life, all of the things about you that you have yet to discover when you put a man in the place of God. So I just wanted to reach out on this day to remind all my women and men too that you need to fall off of your knees, get up off of your knees for a man or a woman and get on your knees to find God. Think about that. And until the next video, guys, mm -hmm. peace. Bye now.